Now, about a 10-minute uphill walk that's just outside the city center, we come to a couple of palatial housing developments that were built during Bath's golden age of the, of the 1770s. Now, these masterpieces are the, visionary, are, the, are the vision of a father and son team, two couple of architects named John Wood the Elder. Say hi, Jackie. Hi. And John Wood the Younger. And as visitors poured into the city, Bath was just simply running out of good places to stay. And so the Woods, the Woods bought this large tract of land outside the city and they outside of downtown and they built these attractive vacation rentals, actually vacation rentals for the rich and the famous in the process that helped forge the Georgian style of architecture that was soon found all over Britain. So this section, true to its name, it might work right here. It's a circular housing complex. It was Wood the Elders next great expansion and it consists of 30 symmetrical townhouses that are arranged in a perfect circle. Oh, I'm standing here pretty clear next to the middle. The views are pretty remarkable, except for you have this tree behind me that makes things a little tough. Um, and there is, you can see here, these trees, and it caps the old well. The old well is surrounded right now by a fence. And you'll see people come in here um, and clap. If you clap from right in the center section here, you get a perfect echo. It echoes three times around the circle. Uh, we like this as well this morning. Here's from the American talking about Brit. Uh, these are, we'd call them moving trucks. They call them removing trucks. Now, this circle is broken into three segments. You can see the streets that come in here. So that anyone approaching from the street has a great view of these facades. Now, each of these residences has five stories. You enter at the street level into what was today, these would be the working day rooms. The entrances were large. Notice how they're taller than normal. And they're taller so that people could ride through on their sedan chairs. <laughs> and, and women wouldn't get their um, wigs or their hairdos all messed up by the doorway. The next floor up with the bigger windows, uh, that's normally had where they had ballrooms and dining rooms for hosting parties. And the floors above held the bedrooms. The top floor, which has the tiny little windows up on top, had servant quarters, and the basement below city level had held kitchens and wood shows. Now, wood united it all together with a symmetrical facade, but the arrangement of the actual rooms behind the facade was left to the owner's discretion. So if you circled around, you'd see that the backs of these buildings are a jumble, and they're infamous for their hanging loos because bathrooms, which came later in the game, were actually added at a later date. So if you notice the frieze, it's a continuous band of reliefs, of sculpted reliefs. It's just located right above the ground floor there, between the first and second floor. There are 525 different panels. Each one of them is unique, depicting everything from dogs to eagles to, to roses. So it's got scrolls, it's got guitars and anchors and leaves, and even roosters are found here. Um, so in the mid-1700s heyday, this circle was home to Britain's elite. Prime Minister William Pitt, the elder, who oversaw the American colonies, um, French and Indian War, lived at number 11. I think it's right there. Nope, this is number this is the 17th. Um, we also have Baron Robert Clive, who brought India under British control. He vacationed at number 14. Uh, which is the sunny side, actually, of the circus. Thomas Gainsborough set up shop at number 17 to paint portraits of fashionable lords and ladies to take home to their servants. So the circus is a pretty cool place. Uh, and this is one of the two we'll be going off to the Royal Crescent next.